now. I'm going to level with you. Most cross-dressing movies have what I like to call an excuse plot. The thinnest, most crumbling reason for our main characters to frock up. A reason that would probably fall apart if you breathed on it. Usually it's to gain some job, or to creepily infiltrate some sorority. But sometimes the filmmakers decide to be more ambitious, and drag in a historical reason. Needless to say, some historical cross-dressing movies work better than others. Imagine, if you will, the stupidest cross-dressing scheme you can possibly think of. Now imagine that it somehow involves Nazi Germany. Now imagine that it's one of the biggest box office bombs of all time, earning negative 99% of its budget back. Yes, here we have a movie so bad and so poorly regarded that not even the inclusion of cross-dressing royalty Eddie Izzard could save it. This is all the Queen's men. Let's get this over with, shall we? All the Queen's Men starts out with an opening text scroll and a voiceover that wouldn't be out of place in a subpar internet review. British intelligence decided to conduct espionage behind enemy lines by getting some of their agents to dress up. Literally. These were top secret operations known as the Poof Platoons. Then the movie starts properly, but some heroic idiot crashing his way out of a German military base in a tank clutching an Enigma machine in his hot little hands. Get used to this irritating lump of man flesh, for it is he who will be our main character. This chump is O'Rourke, and let it be made very clear that no matter how irritating he is, this guy is a hero, and he's awesome, which means that everyone else in this movie sucks. Take these sucky British guys. They're such idiots that they destroy O'Rourke's Enigma machine, because if we had an Enigma machine at this early stage, the movie would have been over. You bastards! After this failed attempt, O'Rourke is recruited to take part in a covert operation to seal another Enigma machine by... We have to infiltrate a factory staffed entirely by females. I want you to turn these men into women. Yes, by cross-dressing. Apparently, they couldn't just send females so just to do the job. Sorry to disappoint you, no more women on combat missions. That's an order from the top. How convenient. O'Rourke is introduced to his colleagues on the mission one by one. First, we have Budget Ben Wishaw, a languages expert. Then we have another dude. And finally, Eddie Izzard. Because if you're going to make a cross-dressing movie, even one as bad as this, you may as well have someone who's a cross-dresser in real life. Izzard is there to help the others drag up, which of course we are shown by way of a montage. <laughs> well, it certainly looks like they're doing things the hard way. Still, at least my humps wasn't playing. So the men are all dragged up, and we're introduced to our very first drag problem. One I've never encountered before. This is the only cross-dressing movie I've ever seen in which the protagonists do not even try. Something's wrong, let's go. The librarians are contact. Those are our orders. Screw orders. My ankle's itching, that means something's wrong, come on. Your ankle? Now I'm staying here, mate. Not one of them even so much as attempts to put on a feminine sounding voice. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Even the most unconvincing Python-esque falsetto is apparently beyond them. O'Rourke, in particular, spends the whole movie trying his very hardest to make sure you never for a moment think that he's enjoying this, meaning that he's constantly reminding us that he's heterosexual, and a man, and het, and why are you even doing this again? I'm not a queen. Now sit your kraut ass down on that chair and don't move until I figure out what to do with you. That goes for you too, fag. What did you say? Unsurprisingly, this incredibly lazy cross-dressing is also very unconvincing. This slightly built budget Ben Wishaw is the only one of the four who even comes close to passing. I know there's a stereotype of German women being masculine, but really? Even if O'Rourke weren't so physically masculine looking, he's far too concerned with his own ragingly heterosexual identity to even bother trying to pass. On the other hand, while O'Rourke is constantly portrayed as both macho and het, the behaviour of the other three men is constantly mined for cheap laughs. What the hell is that? Killer! My mouse are kids. We're always together. He's a pilot. I always wanted to be a pilot. Look, I definitely need to go. Oh, no. It's my mouse again. Budget Ben Wishaw is a sissy who went to Eton. 
meaning that he's as good as come out of the closet already. <laughs> Seems very at home. We went to Eton. His effeminate fussing is apparently comedy gold, as well as his habit of constantly forgetting to sit down to urinate. Halt, stehen bleiben! Kein Schritt weiter! Polizei! How many times have I told you to do it sitting down? Chekhov's make tradition. Izzard is a queen, which is allegedly funny in and of itself, but at least he's afforded some form of dignity and agency, which can't be said for our last character, who spends much of the film literally locked in a car boot. Let me out! Let me out of here! The four idiots are dropped in Germany, only to find that the factory that they spotted from the air is actually a painted decoy. Thankfully, they don't have to languish in the middle of nowhere for long, as they're picked up by a group of Germans who are inexplicably taken by them. Now, before we go any further, there's something that the viewers should know. Unlike many other films, the Germans in this movie actually speak German. And then my Ophiersetzen, meine Damen. Hey, Süße, willst du mein eisernes Kreuz sehen? Now, the version of the movie that I saw had no subtitles, and my German skill is at the same level of a preschooler, but I decided to try and keep watching the movie sans subs, because trying to figure out the gist of the German dialogue was about the only intellectual stimulation this movie was ever going to give me. After that conversation, which I only half understood, the foolish force had managed to find their contact, a German double agent who takes them to a secret house. From there, the men go to a literal Nazi party. Well, not all of them. Budget Ben Wishaw gets left at home, and the other guy's unceremoniously locked in a boot, because fuck him, that's why. Why would we want to dignify him with some agency in their actual plot, when we could instead focus on the amazing awesomeness of our main character? Yes, let's talk a little about O'Rourke, and how agonizing it is to be forced to focus on him for the duration of the movie. O'Rourke is ridiculously insistent on reminding us that he is not one of those damned queers, even when it is stupid or dangerous to do so. O'Rourke apparently can't speak German either, which makes me wonder how the hell he managed to infiltrate that camp in the beginning. And if he can speak German, then why the hell doesn't he just do so, rather than pretending to be Italian like he's in Inglorious Bastards? <laughs> and where is this? Ah, this is my friend Gina from Italy. Let me really Gina! Bella Italia, una donna bella. Sprichst du Deutsch, ne? Français, la langue de l'amour, English. I like a strong <laughs> woman, a woman who can crush a man's head between her thighs like a ripe melon. Gina sucht Arbeit in Deutschland, eine Fabrik, irgendetwas. Die haben gehört, dass sie. I have a job for you, Gina. I have a job for you. Big job. Come with me. Vieni. Thankfully for him, Udo Kier is more of an idiot than Christoph Waltz, so he manages to get away with something that bafflingly stupid. This was evil. Very evil, Gina. Do it again. Oh, te amo. Te amo. Oh. God, why not pretend that you're deaf and you've got a crick in your neck while you're at it? Much of the humour in this movie is basic cross-dressing comedy-style dreck. Men hit on the team, whom they inexplicably find attractive, only to be punched with the mighty fist of Het. Oh, and speaking of Het, our solo awesome Het man, all the other characters are either not awesome or not Het, has to hijack much of the film with a romance with one sole female character, a woman much more intelligent and skilled than he is, which makes me wonder why the hell they didn't just get her to get the Enigma machine instead. The basic plot of all the Queen's men, such as it is, is also frequently hijacked by astoundingly lame action sequences, including one where O'Rourke has to save Budget Ben Wishaw from his absent-minded dick in hand idiocy. Now, if that isn't a metaphor for the movie, I don't know what is. But in the end, the plot to steal the Enigma machine was merely a ruse. Yes, you heard me right. The whole movie was completely pointless. The military knew that O'Rourke and his gang were terrible crossdressers with a hopeless lack of military strategy, and they expected them to fail. Their awfulness was all part of the plan. It would be clever if it wasn't so bloody stupid. But of course, because the team is so plucky and awesome, they still managed to succeed due to the sheer power of O'Rourke's heterosexual might. Or something. And then the movie's over. Hooray! 
All the Queen's men is a slap in the face in so many ways. If you have any grasp of history at all, you'll know that the Enigma Code was cracked without the use of any bullshit cross-dressing spies. Rather, it was deciphered due to the tireless work of computing pioneer Alan Turing and a team of code crackers at Bletchley Park. The movie conveniently ignores the hard work of a man who ended up dying early after being horrendously persecuted for his then illegal homosexuality, as well as the war work of others at Bletchley Park, many of whom were women who were made to sign a secret act. When the war ended, most of them left the workforce to return to post-war domesticity and a life of being treated like bubble-headed woman part having idiots. No, why would we recognise the work of these unrecognised people when we can instead revel in the greatness of an aggressively heterosexual douchebag? A man so macho and fellow-centric that he even tries to smuggle an enigma machine by tying it to his dick. The power of het! But what of the gender hipsters in this movie? Well, Izzard's character is played rather more like someone who just likes women's clothing and performing, rather than someone who has any desire to pass as a woman. A portrayal that's clearly based on Izzard himself. Well, actually, I'm a bisexual lesbian in a man's body. But it's more complicated than that. The problem is, in the context of the movie, it doesn't work. He may have been good at coaching the men on how to cross-dress, but what he doesn't do is coach them on how to pass, which, given that the men were spies, is probably something that would have been important. Stylism. All right, okay, we know everything we need to know about how to act like women. Now, who would know more about this factory? The movie isn't as obnoxious in terms of its portrayal of queer identities as it could have been, given that it had a plot seemingly stolen from the 1960s. Izzard's character is an out and actively bisexual man, as much as he can be, and his ex-boyfriend is one of the most competent and useful members of the cast, definitely an equal to our one main female character. However, Budget Bingwishaw's questionable homosexuality is portrayed as something snigger-worthy, there mainly to provide a contrast to O'Rourke and his manly man ways. I'm not even sure that we can call any of these characters gender hipsters at all. They're just idiots, and the fact that they're meant to be idiots doesn't make the story any better. It's better than Work It, but at least the characters in Work It tried. This movie isn't just stupid and pointless, it's also offensive. Not only is O'Rourke horrible to his colleagues in the film, the way that he is glorified only serves to undermine the hard-working people who really crack the Enigma code. People who actually played a part in the plot of this movie, but we never saw them! Fuck you, movie! Just fuck you! The director of this film went on to make another World War II movie, which was actually well received and netted him the Best Foreign Film Award at the Oscars. Probably because it didn't star Matt LeBlanc, who went back to TV very quickly after this. Eddie Izzard and the other guys seem to have done okay for themselves, but poor budget Ben Whishaw hasn't done much of anything. Probably because Ben Whishaw took all the Ben Whishaw parts. Well, that was all the Queen's men. Do me a favour. Go and watch just about any other World War II movie and you'll be better off. Except maybe Pearl Harbor. At least this movie's short. Those spies hide out in every corner They can't touch you